Hey everyone, welcome to the Tom's Hardware Podcast for May 3rd, 2022. I'm Tom's Hardware Editor-in-Chief, Abram Pilch, and I'm joined as always by Associate Editor Les Pounder. Uh, Ash is off this week, uh, but we have our very special guest, Kevin. Uh, do you pronounce it McAleer or McClear? McAleer. Uh, Kevin McAleer, who is an, an amazing roboticist uh, who has built some Unbelievable stuff using Raspberry Pi and RP2040 stuff. Um, so, Kevin, can you tell us a bit about yourself and how you sure. got started in, in this? Yeah, so um, I, I got a degree in computer science that I did many, many years ago. And um, as a day job, I'm a project manager, so I don't get to sort of do hands-on stuff very much. So um, a couple of years ago, I got an Arduino and I, an Arduino Uno, and I thought, what can I do with this? So I kind of tinkered around with a, a bit of C on there. And it was one of those things that wasn't very satisfying. And I, I bought myself a 3D printer. Um, and this was one of the sort of combinations of things that just clicked in, in my brain. So being able to make something that you can put a, an Arduino Uno in and then program it, and make a robot was just, I need more of this. And I need more of this. So I was trying to look around for, are there any other small robots that you can easily build yourself? Are there any other boards I need to look at? And it was kind of a journey um, you know, exploring that really. And there wasn't a lot out there. So that's why I created that uh, Smars fan website. So Smars are these little robots. I think this is the first one I built. So it's a tiny little cute robot. Has the, um, get it in focus there. It's got a little range finder as its eyes. And um, it has an Arduino and a little shield that fits on top. Uh, that's got all the components to drive it, all the, the motor controllers and, and stuff like that. And it just has a nine volt battery inside. And everything's 3D printed. So all the tracks, they're all 3D printed. And it just uses little um, N20 motors inside. So really, really easy to wire up and get everything working. It's very satisfying to get this working very easily. The only thing was, it was like, right, where next? What else can we do with this? So there's all kinds of add-ons you can you can put on this. Um, would be an example would be... So this is another version that's got a slightly different face on it. In fact, if I plug in the power on this one... I think um, it will display a little face if I can get that to uh, stay on long enough. Is that going to come on? Let's see if it will do it. I think the battery might have gone in this one. But yeah, the little matrix display there you can program. And if you add like a Bluetooth um, device to this, you can mm -hmm. remote control it. So yeah, it was, what else can we do with these things? So I've, I've got a lot of Smiles robots. <laughs> So here's, here's another one with an ESP32 camera on the front, and it simply just takes power from the uh, from the board. But then you can yeah. actually see where you're going with this. So that's a really cool kind of variant. And then there is another variant which is the quad robot. So this one oh, does nice. actually have a Raspberry Pi Zero on board, so it can do things like image recognition, object detection, as well as it just being a cool spidery robot. Where did you get the legs from? Yeah, so the leg, all 3D printed. <laughs> so this is by the same creator, Kevin Thomas. He designed all of this. He's a, an engineering student, and um, he designed that Smiles robot as a, the idea being that there's no screws involved. It's all um, push fit. Everything sort of pulls apart. There's no glue required. Um, so that's the, um, what, did, what did it stand for? <laughs> I should know this as, as the uh, Smiles fan. So it's... Um, uh, let me bring up the page here, all about Smiles Fan. So uh, let me have a look. It's great that you can just 3D print all the parts uh, for that stuff. Yeah. Um, there we go. So Smiles is screwless or screwed, depending on which uh, variant you're going on. <laughs> Modular assemblable robotic system. So that's the idea is it's kind of screwless. You don't need to have uh, screws to, to sort of have everything fit together. It's the same yeah. with this one as well. There's no screws or anything on this one. Everything's just push fit. So it's very cleverly engineered with 3D print. And they're just uh, SG90 servos, the really cheap blue ones. Very easy to put together. And a PCA9685 board for the uh, servo controller. It's a little bit janky, but um, it does work. And this one's got the Pi camera on the front as well. That's one of my favorite ones, that one. How do you solve the power problem? What are you usually using to power these robots? Yeah, so that one um, is easily powered with like a lithium-ion battery and something like an Adafruit uh, power boost um, to either drop it down or pull it up to whatever voltage you need. 
Um, a lot of the other ones, the shield takes care of that. So on, on these Smars robots, this shield can take nine volts in and provide five volts to the Uno. Um, there's a few other things like that, a bit like the, um, you know, the Servo 2040 from Pimeroni. That, that solves the power problem. You can just put, you know, some voltage in and it'll handle all that and work it out for you. Yeah. Um, what else is there? There are, there are probably a few other variations, but yeah, it's usually some kind of board that can, can pull that up. So another tiny robot, this is like a Smars Mini, I call this one. So this oh, is the first cute. robot. I designed this one all by myself. So again, it uses two N20 motors. That kind of mm -hmm. defines the width. And then it has a little laser range finder as its eye. So it has like time of flight. And then there's a tiny little board there that can do the, the power to the, uh, to the motors. And then yeah. the, on the back, the, this little backpack, and it's got a, a Pimeroni um, tiny 2040. <laughs> and absolutely tiny little chips, um, sort of powering the thing as the brain. I'm loving that you've, you've moved it 90 degrees. So it's, it's, you know, the USB port's pointing upwards because normally it. we just think of stacking stuff on top of each other. Yeah. It's one of them way. I, I just thought, how small can you make a robot practically? And, and I, you know, and when, when I saw this little tiny board, I thought, it's got to be slightly bigger than uh, the motors, but not much more. Yeah. And then the last thing I did with Smars was to put a Pico on them. So I've got a Raspberry Pi Pico, the same kind of board that's on the, uh, the Smars Mini there. Um, and again, this one um, I think uses, well, actually this one, this one's slightly different. It has uh, wireless charging on board. So again, I've got a, like a LiPo charging circuit and this can drive over the sort of charging port and, and receive power. So on the back, there's all the sort of wiring that comes out. So yeah, there's, there's videos on each of these things on uh, the YouTube channel. So every time I like to try and save my learning. So if I forget something, I can go back and watch my own video. <laughs> so yeah, there's uh, pretty much a video on every single thing that we cover. Yeah. And then since doing Smars robots, I was thinking like, what else is this? So there's, there's quite a few um, these Otto DIY robots. Um, they are uh, Arduino Nano powered, I think. So inside, they've solved the, the battery problem by just having a battery pack and uh, yeah. another sort of shield. But yeah, it does seem to be a bit of an issue, doesn't it? Is how do you get a good amount of power that's going to last the amount of time you need? So that's the, uh, we've got a few of them. And on this one, they solve that problem with um, a rechargeable nine volt battery. So that means that you don't have to sort of keep throwing away nine volt batteries every time you uh, you run out of juice on them. So unlike these ones, which don't have the nine volt rechargeable. And uh, what else? And then after that, it was where else can we go with that? So I think I built this one after that. So that was um, Open Cat. I think you'll see these now commercially available as uh, Nibble and is it Bit Bitly something like that Bittle. And they're all very similar kind of design. In fact, if I put power on this one, I think it's got a script ready to run on it. So this is using the uh, the Pimroni Servo 2040. Can't get into focus there just because it's got so many um, servos on there. So plug that in. It'll do a bit of a waggy's tail, a bit of a dog's tail that rather than a cat's tail. <laughs> You're going to get the uh, the idea there, though. Yeah. And then from there, um, I then designed a variant of that, <laughs> which is the bunny that you might have seen. So let's just pull the power out of that one. And then the exact yeah, we covered thing... that a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's it. So really, it's just a, a, a different head design and uh, the feet are slightly different. So I've just got this great big uh, USB power supply I'm just going to use to power it. Let's see if we can get that in there. Of course, it's the wrong way around. Right, there we go. Oops, let's try that out. Let's see if I get that to work again. There we go. Wipes its little tail. <laughs> <laughs> but each, each time, each iteration, I'll be learning something new and something slightly different. Like, so on this build, um, I'm using completely different servos. So I had to redesign each of the parts in Fusion 360, reprint them out so that they fit properly because they're, they're very different size than the SG90s. 
And in doing that, you sort of learn an extra skill. And obviously, this one's got the, the feet with the, the spring on it as well. So you can see that there. This has got a spring on the back. Yeah. Yep. And then I think after that, there was the uh, this one, which is I call Explorer. So this was uh, me looking at things like ROS, the robot operating system using LiDAR. Mm -hmm. um, and designing a very simple chassis, it's just like a flat piece. I was very much inspired by, you know, the Pimeroni Trilobot. The, the face is almost identical, I'm sure Chris won't mind. <laughs> um, but it's a good design, so, uh, you know, why change it? And then I 3D printed the uh, the motor holders, which are on the bottom there. So you can buy these commercially, but uh, I designed my own that fit perfectly to this. And then something that would hold the... Uh, the thing with the trial about it is it wasn't easy to put this on top, so I thought I'll just design my own. But just use the uh, Pimroni Explorer hat in there to to power the motors. Fantastic uh, well, hat! Yeah, the, these are a bit janky. This is a uh, my solution to try and get the. Let's see if we get that. There's literally like three wires going into one there, so the two motors are controlled. But I'm sure that problem will be solved in later later iterations. But it does have the the camera on there as well, and it's Raspberry Pi Zero powered. And one of the things I ran into there was the Raspberry Pi Zero, as you probably well know, only has half a half a gig of RAM, so it's not very much RAM. It's enough to run like Raspberry Pi OS, but if you try and run something like ROS, you'll run out of RAM very quickly. And you can do things like switch on virtual memory, but then it'll just hammer your SD card and eventually your SD card will stop working. So all these little learnings that go on <laughs> as you develop things. And then most recently, um, Another variant that's similar to Explorer, uh, but this one um, has mechanism wheels, so it can sort of go sideways. And I designed a much more interesting kind of um, design for the the rangefinder. So this is a, a new one, and that's using the commercially available. Um, and the motors on this one have encoders on the end, so you can really accurately. Um, yeah. Are those out. Pimeroni motors? Those look like Pimeroni motors. They are. They are indeed. Yes. Um, I think they sell the, the N20s with the extended spindle, and you can get a little kit. Um, I'm not sure if they mm. pre-sold them yet, um, but I know that's something. So this is like a regular N20 motor for anybody that's uh, wondering what these things are. So the, the Pimeroni ones have like a little extended spindle on the back with a, an encoder wheel and a little yeah. circuit. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I covered that in the, the last show that I did live. It was all about Explorer and how that works. So I think I did a little section on the... On those encoders. Uh, that's yeah. really cool because mechanism wheels are, are awesome. They are so cool. So that's the, um, the sort of small robots, if you like. Um, I've done a few other things like at the very back there, you can see there's like a ghost and there's a Pac Man there. And they are just Smars robots. They are basically just these with a shell on top to make it look different. So the, the ghost one has a line following thing just sort of coming out of its mouth. If I go to camera you can't even see that on there I, in fact if i go for that one and just move that there you can see it a bit better there so it's got a little line follower thing so it can follow like an amazing oh. pac-man at the back there uh, and uh, that little collection of wires there is a is a raspberry pi cluster and there's another cluster just over there as well next to all the retro stuff got the pi cade there and there's a chassis for a robot there that sort of white one that's just there. That's the in-move robot. So that's Sonny's torso. Uh, Sonny's not doing very much at the moment. And there's um, uh, Isaka, which is the new one. So Isaka has got two boards uh, currently powering it. So we've got a Servo 2040, which hasn't been plugged in. And we've got the, uh, the Plasma 2040. Nice. Which does the, uh, the LEDs. And one of the upgrades I've got ready to go for that, I've not actually done the wiring for that yet is so got all kinds of uh, extra add-ons. So I've got these little 5x5 five five RGB LED matrices, and they're going to go inside the cheeks. There's two of them. There's a little splitter table. Thing there. oh, those are the breakout garden boards. Absolutely, yes. So that means I can then have like, um, you know, either images or text coming past or just like a little blushy, something like that. You can see the 3D yeah. printer there. Yeah, so I've got the, the two 3D printers. There's another one just on the other side of the room over there. Both uh, Enders, Ender threes, or the slightly newer version. Yeah, so that's the uh, wow. The so four of the robots. <laughs> so what does Isaac? Uh, what does Isaac do? What can it? What can yeah. it do? And how did you program it? Yep. So Isaac hasn't currently got um, vision, 
Um, but I did uh, a couple of videos. In fact, I think it's the most popular series of videos on the channel that I do. Um, it's all about uh, build your own AI assistant. So in Python, um, just using things like OpenCV and using some of the speech synthesis and speech recognition libraries. So you can talk, you can say a command, you can say like, hey, Isaac, and it'll sort of, you know, listen for the next command and it's a very simple python dictionary and you know to listen to some commands like you know add something to a list or what's the weather like tell me a joke give me an insult that kind of thing um so there's a whole series on how to do that and then quite recently i did one with the the trial bot i was just trying to get that to work actually before this show but i think i ran out of time and um on this one the, the camera on the front there uh, i was able to get it to change all the colors underneath depending if it sees a face, if you're using uh, object, object oh, recognition. Oh, that's something Ooh. I've been wanting to do with mine, is have really, it do really something with facial do. recognition. That's it. Very, very easy to do. So the, um, the SDNet mobile um, model is already available. So you simply just use that uh, and just sort of say detect faces. And it'll give you an array back with how many faces it's detected and where they are. So you can then like draw little boxes around them and say human or whatever. Um, and you can use other models as well. There's some really good ones out there from, uh, from the likes of uh, Google Research um, that have got thousands of objects in there. So you can literally put like a phone and it'll recognize that there's a phone there. Those things are almost trivial to do. It sounds really complicated, but honestly, they're not. So that's what Isaac can do. It can do all those kinds of things. So at the moment, I'm, um, I'm putting it together. And I was thinking, um, I've not got the strap to hand. Um, I was inspired by Alex Glow and... Um, uh, Daniel Boyer and um, uh, what's the other guy's name? Jay, who has the uh, Helen robot. Oh and man, the, I love I love his work. Yeah, so I was thinking a wearable robot, and I thought I'm going to wear <laughs> I'm going to wear a second head like Zephyr Beeblebrox from. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to happen. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. More, more like another from head. the BBC version. <laughs> yes, but we've got the extra hat and everything, so that we can uh, be, be twins. <laughs> And the more people say that that's really creepy, the more it makes people want to do it. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, what are you using for a microphone and speaker? Are you is a micro? Yeah. Do you have a microphone and speaker built into the Isaac robot? Uh, so currently, um, I have a very simple USB microphone. Um, so I've been using that. I have experimented with where is it? There's a, a re speaker hat you can get. I've got an absolute ton of these. Oh, yeah, the, the seed. Um, yeah, that's the one. Hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of sure. these uh, things, so they can fit on a Raspberry yeah. Pi and give you some audio. The problem I found with those, I don't think they've updated the software, so it doesn't work with newer versions. But I might that might be corrected since then. Um, but yeah. What about the Google AIY hat? Yes. Oh, yeah. well, that'd work. So I do have uh, one of those. Um, Remember they had like a cardboard box with a red button on the top, like an arcade button? Still got it, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, I have got that, <laughs> so that can interface. But you can do a lot of that without that. You can do it just in uh, on the Raspberry Pi, um, yeah. just using um, the speech recognition Python library. I think it's literally called speech recognition. It's like a wrapper. And depending what platform you're on, whether it's Mac, Windows, or Linux, it'll pull the correct libraries down and yeah. give you lots of options for voices and microphones. But yeah, I, I did use that... Um, that quite cheap microphone. And I was thinking about getting something slightly better quality and um, putting that in built into the head. Yeah. And I did wonder about whether to have everything into one Raspberry Pi. So I've got like a Raspberry Pi 4 here. That's what I was thinking about the brain. But then I thought if there are specific boards that do really, ta you know, tasks really well, like the Servo 2040 or the Plasma 2040, then mm -hmm. I can just connect them to this via serial and just issue yeah. commands over serial just to say, run that run that command, run that command. And they're very easy to sort of set up. So that's probably the way that I'm going to go, sort of just delegate the tasks out. So how did you design the head? Like, did, was that uh, an existing design or did you create it? It's an existing design. So um, there's a, an inventor, Gail Langveen, and he's a sculptor, and he invented the InMove robot. So if you go to InMove.fr, uh, there's an entire website there of uh, his robot that he designed, I think him, so all the InMove robots look exactly the same because it's the same face. Um, but I'm, I'm modding mine heavily by putting all kinds of extra stuff on there, such as the ears and the, uh, the eyelashes and whatnot, and the LEDs inside the eyes. That's not standard. Uh, and it, it does really test your maker ability because the 
he's a sculptor. He's somebody who can um, create things like this quite easily. But um, when it comes to somebody like me, who's got basic skills when it comes to, you know, woodworking and things like that. Um, yeah, it really sort of, oops, let me turn off that. It really does, um, you know, push you to the limit. So I'm great with 3D printing. I'm great with uh, Fusion 360, but physically making stuff, sanding things down, iterating all the designs, that takes quite a while. But yeah, that's part of the learning, the learning journey of a maker, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Yeah, we all learn from the failures that we have along the way. That's what yeah, it's yeah. all about, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, talking about learning journey, though, you, you started off with Arduinos, you've done ESP32, you've done Picos, you've done Pies. Yep. I mean, we're not, I'm not going to say, you know, what's your favourite language, what's your favourite board, because that's like choosing your favourite child, <laughs> really. I've definitely got a favourite language, that's for sure. So this is well, an well, ESP32. What's your favourite language, then? <laughs> yep, so Python, MicroPython and Python. This yeah. was a, an ESP8266 uh, board, so the Wi-Fi on it means that you can do all kinds of clever stuff. And uh, I've literally got that... Uh, um, temperature sensor there just plugged into the back um, yeah. and I wanted it so you could sort of remove it and it'd be quite tacit and then on the front there is if I can get that in focus uh, is a, a servo and it will literally go to the temperature of the room that you're in uh, and nice. then it will send that to an MQTT server and then you can receive that in things like Node-RED and Graphit and Grafana so I've got all that stuff set up so this one if I plug it in just records the temperature of the room could have these all over the place. Awesome. <laughs> I was thinking about a variant with a, the ESP32 camera as the eyeball. So that's something I'm working on as well. But yeah, Python is definitely my language of choice. And there's, there's definitely a reason for that. And it's because it's so quick to iterate through. So if you think you're programming something C, yes, the resulting code will be really small and very, very fast. But you've got that sort of compile cycle each time you want to compile something. If you're in the Arduino IDE, you've changed some code, you hit... Um, upload and you wait for it to yeah. compile it then uploads and then you see that you've got a fault with MicroPython or with regular python it's instant you can see that there's a problem and you can just fix it and, and get on so i also find it's an easier language it looks simpler they haven't got all the curly braces and semicolons at the end of lines it's just an easier language so uh, i think the trade-off with performance you know particularly with hardware like the uh, the pico they make yeah. that not a problem anymore. There's not many problems that you need that kind of power for. I think one of the exceptions would be the ESP32 camera. I have got uh, the camera working on that, but it's like one frame a second because Python isn't fast <laughs> when it comes to no, that. No. Yeah. So. Yeah. Also, I mean, have we figured out, has anyone figured out a way yet to use TinyML with MicroPython or CircuitPython? I think you still have to, don't you still have to use C for that? Yeah, I think so. It's one of those tasks that's quite hard to do. I've, I've not looked too much at TinyML yet. Um, I know they they reduce down a lot of complexity with things by just using uh, integers. So um, that's something I need to look into next and find find a use case for that that would work with robots. Yeah, I think actually I saw a tweet the other day from um, from Phil um, Gadgetoid on uh, from Pimeroni, and he was playing about with a new sensor that obviously they're going to release soon, which was um, an array time of flight. So it's like a mm. camera, but with a very crude resolution, but it detects depth unlike a camera. So you can do some really crazy things with that. And he was saying about how could you make it, you know, recognize a gesture? So, you know, could you do some pinch to zoom or something in front of the sensor? Yes, you can. And you can train that using a neural network. Very, very easy to train. So um, I think somewhere in this room, I've got um, Jetson Nano, and that makes that really fast, even in Python. Yeah. So that's something, the, using the right thing in the right way. And then once you've made the model, the model can work anywhere. So it's the, it's the learning process and the crunching through the neural net that takes the time. Uh, that, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. Wow, that is just absolutely amazing. Uh, speaking of robots, Les, you have uh, you were inspired by Kevin, and you have a robot you've been working on. I was indeed. Yes, the whole Smiles methodology of building robots, so you know, friction fit robots that all go together. Now, I haven't got a 3D printer that's in one piece right now. It's currently in an attic in a few pieces, but I wanted to do something pretty similar to what, what Kev's got. So I went into my junk drawer and I found some Lego. I've got loads of this Lego liner, and this is Spike um, kits I've got. And you can see in the center is a Servo 2040 in there. 
So I decided, well, what can I do with that? So I put it all together and made a very simple four servo, so continuous servo robot that just does the basics forward, backwards, left and right, and yes, banana for scale. Yes. You have to have that. So I've got it all here ready to go in um, a micro python. I'm going to switch to Fonny now so I can start it. And it's just going to go forward, backwards, left and right. And uh, I apologize to Chris for the code. This isn't proper code for continuous servos. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is me just hacking around. So I've got some very simple servos that just say, OK, you've got four servos. Enable all the servos. Here's the stop. So it sets the servo to the midpoint so it doesn't go forward or backwards. And if I want to go forward, I can, sorry, if I want to go back, I can just say, right, go min and max, a mixture of both of them, depending on which wheel it is. And then forward is the opposite. Left, we do all the servos to min, and right, all the servos to max. And then disable, which is like stopping everything, just in case. Never forget to put stop in your code. <laughs> Done that before, and a robot's gone flying off the table. That was a fun session. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a quick demo to show you it running. Hopefully you can see it. Yep, you can. Let's go. It takes a second to run. And that's it. But if I was to program it a bit more with more time, so you can see there's delays in the code for just one second, I have to have it to go around the room and plot a path. Now, when I get some sensors to plug into this, and I can plug in sensors to this, if I just go to camera two, We've got some sensor inputs here. So I could plug in an array of sensors. I've also got a stem QT connection here to plug in more sensors. This could be autonomous, and I have built into that a battery underneath, taken from a trade show from years ago, which I've got hundreds of the things lying around. So this can run around the room and chase things and usually get caught under the sofa. <laughs> but Servo 2040, great little board. It got four and a half stars in the review, Edison's Choice. Brilliant bit of fun, and yeah, you're going to have a lot of playtime with this board. Yeah, I mean it's it's amazing what you can do you can do with that board. So, uh, Kevin, I wanted to ask, what is what's next for you? Is it are you still going to be working on your uh, Isaac robot, or do you have some other things that you're working on? Yeah, so. I, I will carry on working on Isaac. Uh, I definitely want to build the rest of the torso now that I've, um, I've got a decent 3D printer. Uh, when I originally printed Sony, this was on um, a really cheap Chinese clone of the Prusa robot, uh, the Prusa printer, uh, and it wasn't great quality. So there's quite a lot of sketchiness around the uh, how things fit together. So it's really really nice to be printing something out on a proper quality printer, um, and. There are still some issues with that that I want to work on. Some of the mechanics are not right, but now I've got some Fusion 360 skills. I can redo my own parts and work on them. And I tend to release everything that I, I do open source just to share it with other people, whether it's code or, or STL files. Uh, and I'll just throw them up on uh, either smilesvan or kevsrobots.com. And um, yeah, so what I'll be looking at next is probably working on um, Isaacer, getting the... Um, the little cheek things working, like I said about having the little RGB LED matrices. Um, and I do like to leave things open to sort of inspiration. So sometimes something will happen, you'll see something, you'll think, I've got a take on that. I want to go and explore that. So I do try and get um, a robot built every week, if possible. So I've got something interesting to share with people and something that I probably learned that's new to me so that I'm enthusiastic about it and I can show uh, why that's interesting, why that's different. Um, so, yeah, that, that's probably what I'll be looking at. And if there are other, any, any other boards or any other um, components that come available, I always look out for things like on Adafruit, Sparkfront, um, Himroni, obviously, uh, to see if they've got any new products out there. And I'll be like, I want to do that. So just today I released a new video um, all about the Pi, um, the Grow Hat, the Raspberry Pi Grow Hat. So you can... Uh, plug in um, some sensors and you can measure um, you know, the, the soil moisture content, the ambient light level, uh, things like that of your plants. And then it will alert you if uh, the plants need watering. And I was like, how can I hack that? Let's, let's add that to the MQTT server. So it can send messages to that. Node-RED can capture that, throw it into uh, InfluxDB. Ooh, no yep, and then InfluxDB can um, 
you know, present that to Grafana and you can have some really nice graphs and charts. So yeah, it's kind of the ecosystem I'm feeding things into. So yeah, that's that's kind of what I will do. I'll, I'll um, my, my sort of goal will be to have a full-size humanoid robot, um, preferably one that can move around. <laughs> <laughs> <I've>... <laughs> things i've not done yet is like a self-balancing robot that's on my list of things to do i've literally got like a trello board think full of things i want to do um so that's that's on the the to-do list um and maybe some more like movie prop type robots so um yeah i've got i've got an idea about uh wearable robots remember book rogers from the 21st century oh of course dr theopolis yeah. Ah, you see, yep, absolutely. I was thinking about making one of those. One you can interact with, one you can talk to, and, you know, it's got the voice assistant, the, the Bill Joan uh, virtual AI assistant in there as well. So that's that's an idea I've got. And, uh, yeah, you could probably put quite a hefty battery in there if you're sort of carrying it around. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, a that's, great, cool. that's a great idea. <laughs> I would love to see a Dr. Theopolis wearable robot. Absolutely. Got to do that. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, that's amazing. Well, I want to thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us. This has been one of my favorite shows because you just have Definitely. an amazing lab of stuff. <laughs> I, was so, uh, I really am going to spend a lot of time now on smartfan.com, and I encourage everyone else to do the same and to check out your YouTube channel. Uh, as always, we are here on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. UK time, 2.30 p.m. Eastern, and we have uh, an exciting guest next week. Uh, do we have a guest lined up? We have a guest lined up for next week, right? We have a guest the next week. We have Jeff Galings coming on the show oh. to talk about GPUs on the Compute Module 4. Awesome. Yes. So, yeah. this is going to, uh, so we're really looking forward to seeing how that works. I know he's been working on that for more than a year, I think, to try and get two, it. Two working, years. Uh, uh, working on, on the Raspberry Pi. So, that's an amazing achievement. Really excited to see uh, where your robots, where Kevin's robots go next. Uh, and we'll see everybody next week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>